among the many prayers you will pray, pray favor-provoking prayer. Oh, favor. for total deliverance from calamities God delivers he lifts in Jesus name we pray Philippians 1 19 hi, 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 hi. glory be to God hi, 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 hi. glory be to God hmm. Hi, 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 glory be to God. Hi, 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 glory be to God. Hi, 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 glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. read this scripture as loud as you can are you ready one to read for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ one more time for I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayers and the supply of the Spirit hmm. so the Bible tells us that things can turn and become for your salvation under a certain condition not every condition calamities can be turned to breakthroughs turned to triumph turned to testimony therein lies the dominion of the saints the ability to walk in partnership with the word of God and the spirit of God and turn any tragic situation no matter how tragic even if you are Job there is a way out Daniel, there is a way out. Hezekiah, there is a way out. Jonah, there is a way out. The things that are written aforetime, the Bible says they are for our learning so that we through patience and the comfort of scripture might find hope. There is a way out. Prophesy to yourself. Oh, there is a way out. That financial problem, there is a way out. That marital problem, there is a way out. That occultic problem, there is a way out. That ministerial problem, my dear uncle, my dear father, listen to me, there is a way out. Out of shame and reproach, my dear sister, there is a way out. Even if you are Ruth, there is a way out. There is a way out. Now thanks be to God which causes us always to triumph and this is the victory that overcometh the world even our faith. It says and I know that this shall turn for my salvation. Now give us that scripture and let me show you the keys. Notice he never said this shall turn to my salvation through my prayer. There are times the one in the tragedy you may not have the power to save yourself. He says it shall turn to my salvation through the prayer of another. Through your prayer. Your prayer. Your prayer over me. Your speaking over me. The prophetic that you bring over me. I know this shall turn. I have prayed it did not turn but there is a system God designed in the kingdom where tragedies and calamities and losses and pain are able to be turned to your salvation through your prayer watch this let me give you let's do three keys one the first key when you want total deliverance from calamities is self-examination write it down self-examination self-examination Luke chapter 15 from verse 17 to 20 popular story that I've shared here many times my Bible says when he the he being the prodigal son remember the story of the prodigal son that guy went and wasted his life in riotous livings the Bible said so 
from friends to all kinds of people. He depleted himself until he was feeding with swine. And then the Bible says, through the power of self-examination, when he came to himself, men can come to themselves. It is within the power of men to come to themselves. You know what it means to come to yourself? Why is my life like this? The day you are ready to sit down and ask honest questions, no matter how ego stinging those questions are, you are already on the path to deliverance. Are we together? The prodigal son's father never came and met him in his mess. There was a part that the gentleman had to do and play by himself. Many people do not come out of tragedy because they have not been able to sit down and ask honest questions. Why is this ministry like this? Why is this circle of disfavor? What is wrong? I look at my life and I do not see it consistent with what God has said. What could be wrong? Let me tell you this. It is more comfortable to blame people than to sit down and ask intelligence pro-deliverance questions. There are many of us today, we are masters and experts at blaming people. God, government, friends, everybody. The power, if the prodigal son had said, God punish those prostitutes that ate my money. God punish the wicked friends that we parted away with. God punish all those people. He would, have, he would have become a pig himself. But he said, do you know what? It's not the fault of the prostitutes. I gave them room to destroy my money. It's not the fault of the bad friends. I did not have discernment to know they were evil friends. But now, no matter what you lose, do not lose sincerity. Did you hear what I said? No matter what you lose, your point of deliverance is when you become sincere with yourself. Why do I have friends who always leave me? Why do I start a business and never end? Why is it that the vision God has given me does not grow? Is God speaking to someone? Why is it that I keep having attacks? Why is our family like this? 23 people, nobody's head has been lifted. Something must be wrong. Do you know you can sit down as an individual? You can sit down as a couple. You can sit down as a ministry. You can sit down as a family. It was God's servant who said years ago the church was not growing. And they gathered the core leaders in the ministry. Rather than shouting and blaming people and giving flimsy excuses that there are too many churches or there are this and that and that. No. He went back and said there has to be a way out. Three days fasting and prayer. And while they were praying according to him, he said the Lord asked him to go out and he looked up and he saw a, a dark layer of cloud. And the Lord told him this is the blindfolding layer that keeps misrepresenting your ministry before people. And then he asked what should he do? And the Lord told him to rebuke it. He rebuked it. It folded like a curtain. And God gave him an instruction. Prepare a poster and write there, come and see. That was it. Hallelujah. Self-examination. Everybody hates me. My uncle will not help me. God will punish them. Their children will see evil. You will suffer there while he keeps rising. Self-examination. Self-examination. Let me tell you this. Self-examination is very discomforting. But that is the springboard for your deliverance. God will never bring deliverance to a hardened, arrogant, self-righteousness um, self individual. No. For someone God is speaking to you now, your arrogance is the greatest demonic attack over your destiny, not even spirits. Let me show you the position of self-examination. This is it. The ability to go on your knees, no matter how great you are, Get down on your knees. Lord, you gave me 10 million. Out of pride and foolishness, I blew it away. I repent. I need you to help me. I went around borrowing money. Now I'm in debt of 100 million, 1 billion. Oh, I gave the money to somebody. That, that's a flimsy excuse. Settle down with your destiny and take responsibility. I gave a real estate agent. He ran away with the money. What do you do now? Settle down. A miracle happens 
when people are ready to take responsibility. The word responsibility comes from the word responsive. How many hired servants? Give us the scripture, please. Look. How many hired servants as my father? And I am here. They have bread enough to spare and to perish. And I perish with hunger. Verse 18. I want to show you the power of self-examination. I will arise. I will arise. Not that I will lie down and wait for someone to come and meet me. I will arise. Men may forget me, but I will arise. I cannot redeem myself, but I can arise. And I will go to my father. And I will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven. Look at what he's saying. Self-examination is a miracle. The moment you get to a point where you can take responsibility for as long as you still blame people, I can tell you, redemption will be far from you. Even salvation today, those who receive that gift are those who admit that they do not have the power to help themselves. Anybody who comes before Jesus to be saved and you put your hand in your pocket and you come and stand and you are watching and smiling as if you are coming to, you are, I mean, as if you died for yourself and you say, Lord Jesus, well, interesting. I mean, I'm here. I mean, if, if you, are, you are speaking English, you will not be saved. With the heart man believes. Are we together? Blind Bartimeo said, have mercy on me. He would have said, Jesus, I have wicked relatives. I'm not the only son of my father. I've been blind here and nobody has come to comfort me. It's the miracle of self-examination. For someone, God is speaking to you now. Why is my business down? There must be a way. I'm a CEO. Someone ran away with my money. Someone betrayed me. Someone stole my products and ran away with it. My business partners ran away. I know they may have the fault, but I need to take responsibility. Lord Jesus, it depends on only me and you. You remain ever faithful. The failure is from me. I take responsibility. How come I have four children and none of them respect me? Not they went to school and learned rubbish as if you taught them well. Take responsibility. Lord, even now it is not too late. They are adults and all of them discard me. There's something I've not done well. Why are my children not becoming great? All my children are beggars. Don't move around and saying, look at all your uncles. Some are in Lagos. Some are in House of Assembly. And they will not come. You hear parents with all due respect. Discuss those things. And their arrogant children also keep joining in the conversation to recycle pain. I'm not trying to be harsh. I'm trying to be truthful. Take responsibility. Hmm. Take responsibility. Take responsibility. Lord, help me. I need you. I need you. Help me. I cannot help myself. Oh God, you are my God. Help me. And I will ever praise you. That's a life of self-examination. Oh God, you are my God. And I will ever praise you. Oh God, say. of God don't give excuses you took the anointing for granted and you were careless you took members for granted you were careless you insulted them and said all kinds of things if you are tired of this church go away and they obeyed you and went away don't say there is a spirit before you talk of altars go and kneel down before God and say Lord help my pride don't say it's my background is from my father if I did not come from this father <clears throat> I take responsibility. I've not been the best of shepherds. I've not loved the sheep. This is the attitude of genuine self-examination. The next is brokenness. Self-examination naturally graduates you. I'm showing you the keys. Many people pray and call for help. 
but they don't examine themselves and they are not broken enough to receive redemption. Brokenness. 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 Psalm 51 and verse 17. This is an irrefutable formula. It will bring any man out of any calamity. The sacrifices of God are not just offerings and tithes, but a broken spirit. It says, a broken and a contrite heart, O God, thou will not despise. If there is one man, I tell you, that for want of word, I will say God cannot resist in terms of paying attention to, is a broken man. No matter what has gone wrong in your life, carry what is left and cry for mercy. Carry what is left and cry for mercy. My home is broken. My life is broken. My reputation is broken. I've done things I should not do and I've destroyed myself. Carry what is left to the altar. Are we together? Carry what is left to the altar. I'm a victim of lack of discernment, you may say. I'm a victim of carelessness. I'm a victim of abuse and misuse. God gave me some money. God connected me to seasoned prophets, seasoned apostles. I used my own hand to destroy my thing. Now, Lord, I'm ready to get back. Oh, listen, in my walk with God, there, I, there, is, there, is, there is nothing more... Um, uh, the, the, uh, how would I put it now? That there is nothing that moves the heart of God like a broken vessel. Let people laugh at you. Let them talk about your yesterday. Go to the horns of the altar. For as long as you remain proud in the, inside that hole, you will keep digging. When you find yourself in a hole, ladies and gentlemen, calamity has struck your destiny. Run away from pride. Pride will only complicate your situation. Hallelujah. Go before the Lord. Lord, have mercy on me. You gave me a good husband. I didn't have the grace to see I kept comparing him with other men, not knowing that he was a faithful man. And now, things have gone apart. Show me mercy. Not, oh God, I know I'm a beautiful man. Somebody will come by force. You talk like that, you remain in that situation. God hates pride, I tell you. I'm an intelligent person. All it takes is just for me to get one data job online and money will start coming. And heaven looks at you and says, are you not tired of foolishness? Only fools say in their hearts there is no God. Anytime you find yourself in trouble, go and lie down before God. I'm telling you, this is a formula that works. Roll on the ground before God and say, my King and my Savior, if you do not show me mercy, there is no redemption in the grave. Pray the prayer of Jonah. Pray the prayer of Hezekiah. The dead cannot praise you, O oh God. The poor cannot give to your work. I have made mistakes. I agree, but show me mercy. Ah, you are ready to see deliverance. It is true. I stole the money in the office. I shouldn't have, but sincerely I did. It was out of pressure. Now I've been pushed out of the job. I take responsibility. I may not be able to return to that frame again, but my God and my King and Savior, nobody will believe I am changed, but you who is my God and you see my heart, can you accept the pieces of this shattered destiny? And God says, bring it. I am not only a Savior, I am the great physician. Hallelujah. Have you seen surgeons perform surgery? Sometimes they remove human parts and you think that is an abattoir to sell it. They only want to recouple it again. Maybe like a bypass for a heart surgery. It is amazing. If you have the opportunity to see that kind of thing, you will not believe that a human being can be shredded like that. They literally can saw the, the skull of a man to reach through the brain and remove a tumor and do all kinds of things. And you are watching a human being in various pieces. And just when you think the person is not alive, is not breathing, just be patient. The great physician is walking. And he keeps walking. For some of you, it will not happen in one day. But just know the great physician is walking. From the moment you began your tears in sincerity, he began to walk. 
For some of you from January till now, you may not see any motion physically, but imagine yourself in the ICU. The surgeon is working, fixing your life, fixing everything. Hallelujah. Fixing it, fixing your business. While others will say, my God, this man, you used to be a millionaire, shame on you. You've gone down. What happened? Prodigal businessman. They do not know you are already negotiating with God. Can I tell you? Be careful when you conclude on men. If God is still alive, there is still a future for them. Because while you are talking about the Jesus who died, he's resurrected long. He died for only three days. Hallelujah. But that prayer, take it higher for me. Let me sing that K-string song. I think this is a good place to sing that song. Get the mic, come. father who is ready to be broken that mother ready to be broken that pastor ready to be broken that once great apostle prophet who is ready to be broken that once millionaire who is ready to be broken that once amazing child who declined to become a prodigal child there is always room at the cross Listen, ladies and gentlemen, there is always room at the cross for the broken, for the contrite. There is no room for the proud. There is no room for those who cannot examine themselves. Remaining in pride, I, I can figure my way out. You will keep digging and digging till you cannot be seen again. Listen. Those who know this principle are those who perpetually tremble before God. They do not even wait till things go wrong by default. The way we stand in this kingdom is to be on our knees. If you stand by standing on your feet, you are in a wrong position. Champions stand by remaining on their feet. That is the most stable position for the believer. The moment you remain on your knees, you have gained stability. You don't fall when you're on your knees. You only fall when you are standing on your feet. Self-examination. Now we get to the last and the final key. This wraps up my assignment. Prophetic intervention. The final key. Oh, Jesus. The final key to administering deliverance, bringing men who have found themselves in all kinds of calamities, spiritual calamities, ministerial calamities, marital calamities, health calamities. Please hear me. I speak as one sent by God. The secret to coming out of calamities is that beyond the prayer you pray for yourself, give us Philippians chapter one, the scripture. Philippians chapter 1 and verse 19. Someone will have to pray for you. This shall turn to my salvation, not through my prayers, through your prayers. Even if you are a midwife, the day you want to deliver, 
you must submit to another midwife. You must submit to another person. Saying you are a pregnant consultant does not give you the grace to deliver. With respect to delivery, you are a patient. You have to lie down and allow probably someone who was once your student in the university to midwife that delivery. Are we together now? Yes. The prophetic is a mysterious spiritual force that is responsible for putting a full stop. I have watched with shock and wonder how prophetic declarations with understanding can bring men out of the tragic situations. Tragic situations. One of the greatest blessings in my life. Every time I have the opportunity to meet our fathers, I look forward to when they speak over my life. No. A discussion that does not concern me is not my business. I'm a young man. I'm a son relative to them, both in the spirit, in experience, and in ministry. I would not be foolish to invite myself to conversations that are beyond my level. I await with humility and patience from the residue of their covenant with God, blood dripping on the altar, even if it's five minutes. My please, please, would you place your hand and say something to my destiny? And sometimes with childlike simplicity, they bless. They bless. Hmm. Yes, ago I was in a particular nation and I got to hear that one of our fathers of faith was there and I called and said, please, I have to go and greet daddy. I have to go and greet mommy. I finished from a powerful crusade. But I said, that is a man of God. He has finished. I quickly did the needful and found my way there. I had the opportunity. I went there. We exchanged pleasantries, joked and played, but I knew that, you see, the less is blessed of the greater. From a powerful crusade, many of us will go as colleagues. I'm a man of God too. And receive nothing and only waste your time. I got there. And he spoke over my life. Next level. Next level. Next level. This is a system God created. It's not a system he found. He created it by himself. When there was darkness... Genesis chapter 1 verse 2. The first thing that began the process of recreation was a prophetic word. Let there be light. Light be. Hallelujah. When you find yourself in a hole, ladies and gentlemen, beyond your personal prayer, beyond your personal altar, God designed systems within the kingdom that it would take others coming in on the strength of the prophetic advantage and their covenant with God to bring you out of it. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. The prophetic. Prophetic intervention is one of the mysterious ways that God brings men out. Isaiah 42 and verse 22. I want to speak to your life now. I'm telling you, I already sense a very strong anointing. But this is a people robbed and spoiled. They are all of them snared in holes and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey and none delivereth, for a spoil and none saith, Restore. 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 There must be a prophetic voice. Alas, Master! I hope you know the young boys were also prophets in training. They were already being built to be prophets. But if that guy arrogantly said, don't worry, Elisha, you have taught me the dynamics of speaking. I will speak to the sea. That axe head would have gone down there. I don't know what happened that the sons of the prophet, the husband of the widow that died, Elisha was still in town. That prophet did not need to die in debt. I'm sure it was depression, mental health, embarrassment that destroyed that man and he died. The woman said, I will not make my husband's mistake. And she went to the prophet. I don't know what to do, but I take responsibility. My husband died a prophet. There, he was helping others, but he did not open up himself for another prophet to help him. Now two of my children are about to go. And Elisha said, you have done well, come. There will always be a prophetic instruction. What do you have in your house? 
nothing except a cruise of oil he said that's enough since you have honored the prophetic go back that same house that same vessel borrow vessels do you know I believe that her ability to even get the vessels was part of the prophetic advantage if she had gone to look for vessels she would not find it because no one was willing to help her when God through the instrumentality of the prophetic I will always want to say that there is the prophetic office there is the gift of prophecy and there is the operation of prophecy there are three different things there are people called into the office of a prophet who are not yet matured enough by training by grace and by release to prophesy just because you are called into the office of a prophet does not give you the credence to start speaking over men and nations no there is the gift of prophecy that can come on any believer and you perform prophetic tasks are we together but you may not be a prophet you are just a healthy believer who have who has opened up your spirit then there is the operation of the prophetic which is a product of a sound understanding of scripture because the Bible has a prophetic character and when you hide the word in your heart it makes you prophetic so you don't have to be a prophet but based on the authority of scripture you can engage it with understanding the greatest way to manifest the prophetic is to have scripture resident within your heart and then the engracing of the spirit that enables you to manifest the prophetic I have watched the lives of people I wish you had time honestly to have watched the testimonies from our workers retreat just over the weekend in the United Kingdom phenomenal testimonies phenomenal testimonies the testimonies we share here in Koinonia with, with every sense of humility, believe me, they are not up to 120th. The testimonies being registered, we have to work with time. The prophetic. I've had people speak over my life and even as a man of God with a bit of an experience in the things of the spirit, I have marveled and wondered at the way things have shifted in my life. Hallelujah. When it was time for a global expansion I shared it with one of our fathers and he prayed and he said in the name of Jesus that may the Lord bring ease and bring expansion and that your voice be heard and known everywhere you receive it by faith and that is it for someone here God brought you to church because if God does not help you prophetically the trouble that is on you now the shame that will come on your life will be a memorial and God wants to step in quickly. Prophetic. Oh, 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 oh. The prophetic controls restoration. The prophetic controls redemption. The prophetic controls deliverance. When it is administered within the boundary of scripture, it works wonders. There are some of you, you have cried unto the Lord in secret, but this deliverance will not come through your own prayers. No, but I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer. In partnership with the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ in one minute right where you are I like you to begin to pray thou son of David have mercy upon me thou son of David have mercy upon me is a businessman praying 
is a man of God who has lost his glory, lost the grace and the favor. Parash kateba lakasiata, egra katepe 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 rakatos, skata prakata belagata praskata belagata bekata. And I know that this shall turn for my salvation through your prayer. And I know that this shall turn for my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Christ Jesus. Go ahead and pray. Let the doors open again, oh God. Let the favor come again. Let my honor return again. Let my hair grow back again. Let shame and reproach leave my destiny. Let the statement Ichabod give way. Go ahead and pray. Please Koinonia pray. Where is that grace that was once upon me that I never had to beg for jobs? Let it return, oh God. Restore, 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 redeem, deliver. Deliver by the Spirit. The Lord will rescue us from every evil attack, the Bible says, and to bring us safely to his heavenly kingdom. Prodigal son, your father is still alive. There is still hope for the signet ring to return to your hands. Someone pray. You can pray for your loved ones. We give you worship, worship, the highest praise to the King. We give you worship, worship, the deepest praise to the King. Muima kasujara, Muima ka kaukaka. taken all the weakness you have taken all limitations you have taken all the sorrow you have taken away disappointment you've taken away my tears you have made them yours By the arm of flesh, I cannot prevail. One more minute. You are pouring your heart before Jesus, the deliverer, the helper, the restorer, the redeemer. 
His arms are not too short that it cannot save. His ears are not too dull that he cannot hear. Your iniquity has brought a separation between you and him. Pray the prayer of the prodigal son. For someone you need to pray the prayer of Jonah. For someone you need to pray the prayer of Hezekiah. The prayer of Hezekiah. Only the living can praise you. The dead cannot praise you. The weak cannot praise you. The defeated cannot praise you. Arise for your name's sake in my life. Hallelujah. 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 Every once and again in scripture, you will read a very comforting rendition after tragedies. And the Lord remembered. And the Lord remembered Sarah. And the Lord remembered Hannah. And the Lord remembered Rachel. And the Lord remembered Leah. And the Lord remembered Joshua Selman. And the Lord remembered Koinonia. One minute before I speak over your life I want you to mention the areas where deliverance must come for you now please mention it before God some of you you have lost your honor you have lost your reputation you have lost your integrity cry restore some of you you have lost the capacity that grace for wealth some of you you have lost certain dimensions of the operations of the spirit some of you, you have lost the gift of man. Go ahead and pray. Mana sana paraka sevele sali kahasia da barantus ye. Shakre gevede kete balakata praska baraka toshka pray. Skade mena shalanda skavreska bara supresh. E kriata kete fraska balakata. Oh, restore, 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 restore. What's that our song on restoration? Take it high for me. Restore everything that was lost. Restore everything that was stolen. Restore everything that was lost. Restore, you will restore. Restore everything that was lost. Restore everything that was stolen. Restore everything that was lost. Restore you will restore. One more time. Restore. Hallelujah. I want you to receive the prophetic word now. When God sends us, we come in the name of the Lord. Restore everything that was lost. Restore everything that was stolen. Restore 
the honor that was lost restore you will restore restore everything that was lost restore my god everything that was stolen restore everything that was lost restore you will restore come play the saxophone for me go ahead i want to prophesy twice huh go ahead and play once I'm just walking by the spirit and when that happens I'm going to begin to speak go ahead in the name of Jesus Christ let me start with those who have lost things you have lost things in the name that is above all names I'm praying now here at Koinonia by the power that raised Christ from the dead from Abuja to Zaria to UK to US to Canada across Africa Koinonia global and indeed the body of Christ I stand by the privilege of the election of grace and I decree and declare let there be a restoration now 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 let there be a restoration now. Let there be a restoration now. Let there be a restoration now. Tragic events that don't have an explanation from losses, financial depletions, the death of loved ones, the loss of relationships, closed doors in the name of Jesus, the spirit that is behind it, I come by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. I decree and declare that spirit gives way now. That spirit gives way now. That spirit gives way now. Every mark upon your head, you may not see it, but it keeps calling tragedies to your life. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the blood of the eternal covenant, I wipe that mark from your face now. I wipe that mark from your destiny now. 
Hear me. Everyone you have lost favor with, lost touch with, in this place tonight, by the mercy of God, I command restoration. I command reconnection. I command restoration. I command reconnection in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray specifically for those who are in any kind of financial trouble. I've owed people before. I know what it means. The, 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 the pain only God can explain what it takes to not be able to have a sound sleep because there are bills you are owing whether institutionally whether corporately whether personally none of them is profitable i pray for you the same grace that brought the axe head from the waters in the name of jesus every financial situation you have gotten into that is leaving you now with shame and embarrassment by the power that raised christ from the dead before the end of 2023 come out of that situation come out of that situation by the ministry of men come out of that situation by the ministry of favor come out of that situation by the ministry of wisdom come out of that situation by the ministry of mercy come out of that situation in the name of Jesus Christ for those who have lost time delay has happened in your life and the truth is that time has gone even if the constraint were taken away from your life it will take grace for you to catch up I pray for you there is speed and there is restoration these are the two mysteries that help men to redeem time the Bible says redeeming the time because the days are evil and there are two spiritual forces allocated for time redemption one is called speed another is called restoration when God wants to help you you will experience both restoration brings yesterday into tomorrow speed moves you further into your tomorrow I pray for you by the force of speed and the force of restoration may time be redeemed now may time be recovered now by the forces of speed and the forces of restoration may time be redeemed now everyone here who is under any curse any diabolic manifestation the scourging tongues of men according to Job chapter 5 one of the six things that he says God would deliver us from anyone who is a victim of that I pray for you here at Koinonia in the name of Jesus be delivered from any and all evil be delivered from any and all evil now hear me some of you perhaps what you are going through is because of the pain that you cause for others maybe in your time of ignorance and you cause pain for maybe your parents or you cause pain for a man of God and in their pain or some woman some intercessor and some of them in their pain they hit their chest and made declarations to the heaven that you will not prosper some of them have died today some of them have gone away you need help I stand by the advantage of priesthood everybody who has spoken negatively maybe your biological parents maybe a man of God you ignored maybe somebody that you caused pain in their life in their family I call upon the God of all grace and mercy this night let that curse come to an end over your life let that curse come to an end over your life where they said you will die I prophesy leave where they said you will fail I prophesy go and excel where they said your children would do the same negative thing I midwife by prophecy may your children be Beulah and Hephzibah in the name of Jesus Christ that out of their pain they said it will never be well with you I call upon the God of mercy because today you are the righteous I say to you it shall be well 
Hezekiah, where Isaiah has told you the sickness is unto death, I stand in the name of Jesus Christ as an able minister of the New Testament and I pray for you. Live long and fulfill your days. Live long and fulfill your days. Let me prophesy to Ruth. You've lost your husband, lost your children. And you have said, do not call me all that name. Call me Mara. It is bitter. Call me all of that. And Naomi has tried to comfort you. Oh Ruth, hear the word of the Lord. There is still the second phase of your life. You are yet to meet Boaz. You are yet to become part of the lineage of Jesus. Therefore, by prophecy, I open up the new season of your life. Gideon, you may be the weakest and your father's house the weakest. But in the name of Jesus, I speak to you like the angel spoke to Gideon. From tonight, go in this your might. Yeah. Hallelujah. You may be like Mary and Martha. Martha said if you had come earlier, he would, have, he would not have died. But I like what she said. Even now, even now, even now. It didn't happen in 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. But even now, even now, November, I decree and declare, may your eyes see your desire before December. The final prophetic declaration. Please hear me. Every grace that God has deposited in this house that is not yet speaking in your life, I release my faith one more time in the name of Jesus, perhaps through dishonor, perhaps through carelessness, lack of discernment, all of these things that I mentioned, you are not having it work in your life. I agree with you by faith and we stand together as a noble family of faith. I declare, may this grace rest on your life. May this grace rest on your life. Hallelujah. When Sarah bore Isaac, she named him Laughter. And she said that God has made me to laugh. And all who hear me will laugh with me. I decree and declare by this prophetic word, let crying, mourning, weeping come to an end. Because the Bible says, weeping may endure for the night, but it says joy comes with the morning. And the Bible says he called the light day and the darkness he called night. That means when light comes, it is your day. Now that light has come, I command the night to cease. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Please give Jesus a big hand clap. Among the many prayers you will pray, pray favor provoking prayer. Oh, favor.